put pressure on the shoulders so they're being pushed down, they'll get a smell of rotting meat. We get a lot of activity in here, a lot of people feel pushed, they see red eyes again. There's definitely someone there. He actually had a sighting of a tall man down here. It's just constantly fluctuating. Scratch. Scratch. There's a lot of people who feel like they've been kissed around the mouth, mostly women. I don't know how creepy that looks. I witnessed a guy be picked up off the side of the bed here and thrown against the wall behind you. This creepy cell yeah. where red eyes have been seen? 250 deaths, but um, I'd say anywhere probably 500. <laughs> Hi Crypt Keepers, thank you for tuning into Amy's Crypt. Tonight I am going to show you and we are also going to investigate one of the most historic and haunted places here in Hobart, Tasmania. We're going to be checking out a courtroom, we're going to be checking out underground solitary cells and we're also going to be checking out some gallows, so stay tuned. The Hobart Convict Penitentiary is claimed to be one of the most haunted places in Tasmania, Australia. The former prison has a long history that dates back to 1821 and extended into the 1960s when much of the structure was demolished. During this time, thousands of men and women were to pass through the penitentiary's doors, with not all of them making it out alive. Some of these convicts met their fate at the penitentiary's gallows, where 31 men and one woman were executed. Still remaining today, and considered to be an active area for paranormal activity, are these gallows. As well as numerous cells, including some that are underground and used for solitary confinement. Courtrooms, where at least 18 people were sentenced to death, and a judge died of a heart attack. Underground tunnels, where some have sighted shadow figures. And finally, half of an old chapel used specifically for convicts. Tonight, we will explore and investigate these haunted areas within what is left standing of the Hobart Convict Penitentiary. All right, guys, so I want to give you a really good tour of this place. So we are going to start in Courthouse 1. So we're actually standing in what is known as the Hobart Convict Penitentiary, but we are going to call it the Tench because that is a really cool nickname that this place has been given. So I'm actually joined by Stacey and Emma from Paranormal Convictions, and they do a lot of paranormal events here and the ghost tours. So you guys are quite knowledgeable about this place. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Can, you, can you guys tell me a bit of uh, the history, uh, just overall history, as well as just something about this courthouse? Oh, in this courthouse, in this courtroom, I should say, there has been 17 men and one woman sent to the gallows from here, from this very courtroom. Before 1860s, it was actually the church, then it was all converted, knocked down to what we've got now. After that, yeah, courtroom until 1983. So this part was 1841, I think. 41. Yeah. What are the pieces of interesting evidence that you've uh, picked up here or people's experiences? Well, the most experiences I've had since being here are in this box here. Um, people will, if you are getting there, telling, talking to them, um, will get there and sort of flinch and give each other the kind of a look. Yep. It just tends to come to life. It really comes to life, especially like females, I feel, more than males. Well, that's good. <laughs> judge's chair is another hot spot. Mm, yeah. So your judge did die there in that oh, spot okay. of heart attack. He had a heart attack oh, in the spot. Yeah. So what kind of stuff happens in the chair? Uh, you get people feel pressure on the shoulders, like they're being pushed down. They'll get a smell of rotting meat. A lot of walking up there. Kids, especially kids, get the feeling up there. They sort of come down or something touches them on the back or something pinches them, touches their hair. Oh, wow. That's that, that sort of feeling. Barely ever yeah. men that sit in that chair. Barely ever. You can hear screaming in here from a lady. Yes. Down, down here, mm -hmm. down from the footsteps you hear, like we'll be sitting here, um, just quiet, just doing EVPing or, or down downstairs, um, noises, banging, that's an old building, yep. so obviously, you know, you got to take that all into account, but um, definitely footsteps and things that you hear. That's really interesting. So it sounds like this place is quite active and, you know, a lot of people have reported different things and experiences here. So I'm very keen to do some investigating here tonight. Maybe we will sit in the judge's chair, see what happens. All right guys, so I'm gonna take you down 
into an underground tunnel now. It's way more creepy than, you know, at first glance this courthouse appears. But before we go, there's something else really, really strange and odd that someone actually captured here on a ghost tour that I want to show you. So just behind me is kind of like the jury kind of uh, stand. And this photograph was captured on a ghost tour. Now it's not actually in this particular jury stand, but it is here. And there was no one in the picture at the time, but if you look closely, there's definitely someone there. I don't know how good you can see that on camera, but if you guys look in this area, it kind of looks like there's a lady. So I also have like a close up of this image and it really is just weird. Like, I know this is hard to, you know, say whether how legitimate this is because I wasn't there when this was taken and it's, it is just relying on someone's word saying there was no one there when I snapped this photo. But I don't know, just something about this is really, really weird. <laughs> All right, guys, we are just heading downstairs now, and this is where things start to get pretty dark and creepy. All right, guys, so we've just ascended the staircase and we're in a really, really creepy tunnel. Now, this tunnel is kind of like a connection system from this courthouse to other areas of the building. So we have a chapel down here and we have a second courthouse, and I'm just gonna walk down and kind of <laughs> show you guys. So a lot of uh, prisoners would have been transported through this area for sentencing and there has been some, you know, paranormal activity down here too. So... And just around this corner, and yes guys, I know how creepy it is. So Stacy's son, whose name's Sebastian, and who I just found out is actually an Amy's Crypt viewer, which really warms my heart. I love it. Shout out to you, Sebastian. Anyway, when he was down here, he actually had a sighting of a tall man down here. And understandably, it kind of spooked him. I think if I saw something down here, like that would just really, really freak me out. But he seen him somewhere in this area. I'm not exa too sure exactly where. But I, I can tell you there's a really, really cold draft coming through here. I don't know if that's just because we're underground, but seriously, right now my legs are very, very chilly. <sighs> but we have a couple of other areas of, you know, the old uh, Hobart Convict Penitentiary that I want to show you. So let's keep moving. All right, Stacey, so where are we now? We're in solitary confinement cell. Okay, so what is this? This is a solitary cell. So it's where people would be housed for up to 23 hours a day. So they get one day, one hour of exercise a day and that's it. Other than that, they're in here, there's no lighting, no ventilation, no nothing in here. Yeah. And dust on the floor. Yeah, there's no actual floor, there's just no, dust, It's right? dust. It would have been a pretty horrible place to kind of be kept. So I'm gonna guess this is another active area, right, for the paranormal? It is. We get a lot of activity in here, a lot of people feel pushed, they see red eyes again. There's a lot of people who feel like they're being kissed around the mouth, mostly women. Ooh. Young children feel like they're being shouldered, pushed down on the shoulders. It's quite active in here. Yeah, that's amazing. And there's a few of these cells that are still um, surviving, right? Yes, there but is. There used to be a lot more here? There was. All up, there was nine on each uh, side of the wings that went out, and the yep. three settlers had 18 solitary wow. cells. Yeah, and some of them are really, really small. So can you tell me about the really little one? The and small I'll put one some overlays. Is so. 27 inches high. Wow. Mm. Yeah. How could you someone even get in there? They would lay down. Yeah. They like being in a coffin. Yeah, that's horrendous. Well, I think that this is another place we have to come back and investigate. All right, guys, I'm joined by a little friend here of mine. I'm currently standing in one of the refractory cells here. And this place is of particular interest to me because I know that Stacy doesn't like it. So I'm gonna swing you guys around to her. If you wanna tell me a little bit about this, this room. This room is one of the scariest rooms I've ever been in. I witnessed a guy be picked up off the side of the bed here and thrown against the wall behind you. It took three of us to get him up and out of here and out the front door. And he's not been back since, and I don't like it in here. <laughs> What reason do you, would you he, give? he was provoking, so oh, I kind see. of, we did ask him to ease it down a little bit, he didn't, he continued, and that was what happened. 
Has there been other strange things happen in the cell to other people? So we have some other tour guides that do stuff in here and they won't come in because they feel like they're being pushed all the time. A lot of people see glowing red eyes in the mannequin behind you and yeah, they just don't like it. It feels uneasy in here for them. Children are often the ones that actually see the eyes, yes. which is, um, it goes sort of hand in hand with kids being younger, being able to see, being more pure and seeing it. It's an uneasy feeling. It's normally five minutes in here and then out. That is creepy. I would freak out if this guy had red eyes. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, so if you haven't guessed already yet, we are at the gallows and I'm told this is still a working gallows, right? Yes, this would be still a working gallows. So if they were bringing capital punishment, this would be the place where you would be hung. Okay, that is, that's full on. And these bars are original, right? The they are, beams? yes. So the three beams above us are from the original jar, first jar, which was down in Macquarie Street. So they actually moved this up here. So you were, I reckon you would have seen over the, probably, to over, I know, 250 deaths, but, um, I'd say anywhere, probably to 500. The jail, the person that was the hangman was um, Solomon. Yeah. He would go around Tasmania and hang different people. What we know of is 32 people were hung here and there was one lady. So I'd assume a place where there was a lot of death to occur, there would also be, you know, that kind of goes hand in hand with paranormal activity. Has there been any strange occurrences here that people have reported or strange feelings or sensations? Absolutely, Solomon does not like you standing on his this part here. Oops. So no, no, we sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the hot spot. <laughs> so he doesn't like that. Um, he finds that quite, uh, and he doesn't like anybody to touch his um, little uh, pull, pull piece down here, which would pull open the door, trap door, which would um, take you down, uh, obviously. Um, if you go downstairs later on, um, if you go under there, a lot of people do say they have this strong smell of urine, which makes sense because the body gives way after yep. they've been um, died. Um, people just get an uneasy feeling, full stop of being in here. Um, people get touched. Um, pushed a little bit, you know, like around. Um. Definitely an intense part of, uh, you know, this this building. So I think we'll definitely be back out here later. To this see. is one of the darkest places. Yeah, yeah. to see if we yeah. can pick up on anything. For those of you who do not know, this is Sonia. This is my mum. She's actually Hi. filling in for Jared as my camera person. And we're just, you know, starting our investigation and deciding which way to go. What way should we go, mum? Should we go to this creepy cell yep. where red eyes have been seen? Yeah, or that. this one down here, the old solitary cell, you know, where people get kissed on the mouth and stuff. I like the kiss on the mouth one. Oh, you dirty, dirty woman. <laughs> All right, you go in first. Apparently Walter's in there. Walter? Yeah. Walter's gonna love you. Walter loves you, girl. <laughs> so we're gonna go that one. Yeah. All right, go in. Yeah. Oh, Mum. I've got your case here. What? So normally I would do a Jared cam with Jared. Yes. Should we do Mum cam? Yeah. You're so so brave. <laughs> <laughs> Jared would not be like, right. yeah. <laughs> Big shoes to fill. Nah, you're, you'll be right. All right, so I couldn't let mum do her first mum cam alone because she probably won't know what to do, will you? No, not really. <laughs> but I'm surrounded with cat balls. So she's got uh, one here, one here, and there's one somewhere in the middle of the One on either side of me, one room. in the front. And mum, did you know that you're standing at the active end of this cell? Yes, I do. Okay. If there's anybody in this solitary confinement cell, can you please make your presence known? Are you able to touch one of us, make a noise, or maybe touch one of these clear balls on the floor? Yeah, light the balls up. Can you give us a sign that you're around? We would appreciate that. It's really creepy down here. <laughs> it is. And it's tiny, this little cell. Are you creeped out? Imagine how many blokes would have been down here. Ooh. 
Yeah, there was a lot. It was really awful. What's also weird is the chapel is right above our head. Yeah. Can you uh, come close to the lady standing at the other end of the cell? Okay, it's Walter. Is it Walter? Walt. Is it alright if I call you Walt? No, you might like Walter. Well, if you don't like Walt, you should probably let me know. Can you light up one of these balls? What was that? There was a clash out there, like a metallic bang. Oh, was it? Yeah. Um, so Walter or anybody else that was down here, come and light up one of these balls so we know you're here. There's one right in front of me. Just come and touch it. <clears throat> Jesus, do you have to breathe in so deep? <laughs> it freaks me out. I've got to breathe. <laughs> yeah, but oh, not heavy. don't do it heavy. <laughs> Sorry for breathing. I'm just going to show you guys around. So this is how big the cell is. And prisoners, I'm told, would spend up to four days in here, but generally about 24 hours. And it's complete, complete darkness. So right now, I'm gonna flick off night shot so you can see just how dark it is. Oh, oh hello. Coincidentally, the cat ball is going off. Thank oh. you. If that was Walter, can you light up that same ball? Now you know where it is, you can touch it again. There we go. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Walter. So we have a guest. Nice of you to join us. What do you think of the lady in this cell that's standing next to your light up ball? Light it up if you think she's all right. I'm a bit old. <laughs> I don't know how old you are, Walter, but I'm a bit old and I need to put my glasses on because I don't know that I can see you very well. Walter, I light up that ball awesome. if you are an appropriate age for my mum. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how old Walter is. How do you what like... about the other ball? There's one on the other side of me. Can you light that one up? Ooh. No, you light that one. Light that one. Now, Walter, if that is you lighting that ball up, can you make a sound? Can you tap something really loud? We're listening. Yes. Thanks, Walter. Thanks, Walter. That's awesome. Can you light the one up in the middle of the room, please? So if you go to walk out of the cell now, which you can do, there's a ball right there. You should be able to touch it on the way out. And then you can come back in. I'm just going to show you guys outside the door because last time I went to do that, the ball lit up. And I know how creepy that looks. I just started a ghost tube session and it said which. We missed it off camera but I managed to just record it on my phone. And the reason why that's kind of relevant is one of the ladies uh, that we spoke to earlier, Emma, has been called a witch here on the Ovilus before. I mean, we have no footage of it in the moment happening, but what we've done now is I've just swapped spots with mum. I'm doing a ghost tube session, so you guys will see some readings across the bottom of the screen. There's a lot of erratic magnet activity in here, I feel like. It's just constantly fluctuating. Scratch. Scratch. Are you going to scratch me? Can you hear that? Yeah. If you are going to scratch me, please do that. 
Can you also come really close to my hand where these lights are coming from? If you get close enough, it will make this noise. Because if you're gonna scratch me, you need to get close to me anyway. So get close to the phone too, is all I'm saying. Do you not like me? Is that why you called me a witch and said that you were going to scratch me? Actually, you're probably talking about the other lady in this cell, right? Damn it. <laughs> we're here all night, so please don't be what? shy. What? You're the one that said scratch. Do you not understand what I'm saying? Is it Walter who is in this cell? If it is Walter, can you light up one of those balls that are on the floor? Can you throw something at one of us? Can you actually scratch me? I've never been scratched by a ghost before. You know what? <laughs> Please, scratch away. I know that I've heard that also people kind of get kissed in here. Do you have a thing for the ladies? What, what's wrong with us? You're calling us witch and scratch. Interestingly, in this segment, we now receive a response that seems relevant to what I had just asked. And seconds later, we capture a strange anomaly appearing at the top of the screen. It is difficult to establish what exactly this may be, as it happens so quickly and mostly out of shot. Please share your own opinions on this in the comments. Friend. Friend? Yes, that's right, we're friends. So now we're your friends? Yep. Or is there someone else here? If, there, if there's someone else here who is friendly, we, we would love to be friends with you. We would love to talk to know something about you. If you can move to the center of the room, there is a ball on, oh. there's a ball near me as well. <laughs> Thank you if that was you lighting it up. I've also heard people have been growled at in here. Who does that? Daniel. Daniel. Daniel was a young boy, he was only 19. Oh, the one that was hanged? Yeah. Okay, so there is a, a young boy, only, yeah, only 19, who was hanged, named Daniel. And he's one of the only, I think he was the only one whose body didn't get um, given to medical science. And his mother was actually able to claim his body after he was hanged. Daniel, did you die here, Daniel? I know that's a nasty thing to ask. They executed five people at once. Someone's actually been physically lifted and thrown against a wall in here. Is someone sitting on the bed? Glowing red eyes appear, particularly in the mannequin. The man in the corner is like really imposing. It's like the face is just changing. Well, yeah. rattling their chains, banging and screaming and yelling. That was another noise. I can hear footsteps out there. Fucking eye. Lives were ended here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you're interested in seeing and learning more about the Hobart Convict Penitentiary, make sure you are subscribed. You've got your notifications turned on because I have a second part to this series coming up soon where we investigate some of the other areas of the jail. You guys can also do a bit more reading on this place or other haunted locations that I visited over on amyscrypt.com. You guys can follow me at amyscrypt on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks for watching Crypt Keepers. Until next time.